scientist, archaeologist, uh, poet, Athanasius Kirchner is a very uh, fascinating figure because we don't really know a great deal about him. And uh, so his, his, his work and his life are a mixture of uh, uh, truth and fiction. And you're not sure what is, what is truth, what is fiction. I think that's the whole point about Kirchner. Kircher was a German Jesuit who went to Italy because he wanted to go to the richest man on earth at that time, which was the Pope. So he did all kinds of research on all different kinds of things, everything you can imagine, from also music and geography and animals. In one sense he was a, a kind of universal scholar. On another level you can see him as a, as a universal charlatan. People started finding out that he made up a lot of things also, that he explained to, to the graphic people around him, which were mostly in Holland in fact, uh, no, make it a little bit more like this, and uh, so he, he made up things, which makes him totally impossible for scientific research, but very valuable for the artists to make an opera on him. It starts in a graveyard, and out of one of the graves comes Kirchner, who is reliving, in, in a sense, his story. And it finishes with his funeral. Uh, the opera finishes with his funeral. So. In a, in a sense, that's kind of a, a structure for the storytelling. And Louis Andriessen is the most important Dutch composer alive. He's not interested in opera in the 19th century understanding of what an opera is. He's really rewriting the rules. He approached me and said, I think this particular subject matter is very appropriate for you would you be interested in directing it yourself? And he also wanted the Quay brothers to design the, the visual aspect of the opera. Who are very strange artists who do very strange pieces, which have to do also with something like irony and grotesque, but it is also a little bit dark and strange and so We actually met Louis in the Barbican back in the year 2000. It was a BBC program. Lewis came up to us and said, um, maybe one day we'll work together. I think it was 14 years later, he, he, we met and he just said, would you like to, to work on this opera? He said, of course, we'd love to. We'd had the books, the encyclopedic, uh, all the references. I guess what we didn't was the scenario that was written for the opera, which is very, um, Grotesque. Eccentric, he was grotesque in a way. That's the, actually the title of the piece. The undertitle of the piece. Theater of the World is the, the title. But all is grotesque, and from the first note to the last note, also in the music. Irony is a very profound way of uh, thinking, and, and, and not far from uh, the, the new uh, thinking in Germany in the early 1800s. The idea about uh, nothing is sure, everything is different. Uh, there's always another side to the things. This kind of uh, related thinking is uh, very profound. But my f definition of irony is also profoundly melancholic. And everybody will agree with me that even when it's la 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 la, it's not la 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 la. No, it's no fun at all. And that is what I, why I like it so much. It's because it's really very dramatic. Mm -hmm.